If we can get a gap down tomorrow, I think that what's going to happen is we're going to trap some very, very late, aggressive, naive shorts, and we're going to start the rally. And the reason why I say that, number one, again, we bounce off a technical level here. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. So um, let's dive into it. I was going to lead with kind of the technical view of the markets, and then I was going to tell you exactly what happened to me um, right around 10 o'clock, 10, between 10.30 and 11 o'clock on Tesla. And there would have been a kind of a whole whole thingy majiggy I was going to talk about there. Certain losses that you can't explain that you really can't put a finger on why a stock didn't cooperate off technical levels. And one of those things, you know what, let's just move forward and, and go ahead. And other times, you know, other times you realize that there's somebody in this market that always knows something. And before we get to Tesla, I wanted to go about, I want to go about the technical view, just to kind of give an idea of what we're in store for tomorrow. I think that's the big picture and then we'll kind of tackle what happened here on, on Tesla. Um, this is the first day that I can remember in the first, in the last three weeks or so that had two things happening. Number one, we gapped down this morning, five, six, 700 points, whatever the hell it was. Uh, all the time, I always talk about on any gap down, especially aggressive ones in the market, the value initially is always to the upside because, again, we always talk about that 90, 95% of the value of the average true range is already in that dump pre-market or in that dump at the open. So you're going to have some sort of significant bounce, whether it's a bounce prolonged or a short bounce, but you're going to get some aggressive short covering, if not real buying. And what we noticed today was the first time that I can remember in the last three weeks that, number one, the dip did get bought. OK, there was a lot of strength at the open, despite the Nasdaq composite being down 200, 250 points. And the most important part is, and this is where you kind of have an idea of what's going to happen next. This is the first time we saw in three weeks that buyers were stepping in deep into blood, deep into the shark infested waters, buying names deep out of the money calls with short term expiration. Amazon, Netflix, NVIDIA, OK. Uh, Facebook, Apple, right? So we had a lot of really big buyers stepping in with speculation money first time around. And slowly but surely, what you started to seeing is a lot of these names went from being down a lot to being down a little bit and ultimately going green in the day. And again, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. So what I like going into tomorrow's session is every single time we start seeing these deep out of the money calls coming in, okay, especially from lower levels. Usually what follows is speculation price per share increases. And that's what we saw today. And it was very, very bullish. And if you look at uh, the Twitter feed, I'll show you that in a second. When you look at the Twitter feed today, I believe we only had one short setup, like literally one short setup. And I still think, I still believe uh, that it's going to go lower. I still believe, I think we only had one short set, set up on this whole big gap of everything else was to the long side. Um, and what I think is going to happen if the market doesn't gap up tomorrow, and I, and I really hope the market doesn't, if we can get a gap down tomorrow, I think that what's going to happen is we're going to trap some very, very late, aggressive, naive shorts and we're gonna start the rally. And the reason why I say that, number one, again, we bounce off a technical level here, this linear regression line at 260. More important is we started to uh, reclaim levels. So if you notice, this, this is a whole big trend line here, and we reclaimed this on the close. So again, we're not out of the water. Nobody's talking about we're gonna to rally to all time highs, but this is a really good initial first step, which is very, very important, and again, can we get a snapback rally for the next day or so back to the 10 day moving average of 272 and change? I believe we can. Okay. I like what I'm seeing here. I, I like what I saw 
uh, in the afternoon towards the close. I like that I saw a lot of names that were really, really beaten up, not only cash option flow, but really started reclaiming very, very big levels, macro levels. So that was very, very bullish. So I think going into tomorrow, um, if we get a if we get a get dip lower, right? If we open up lower tomorrow, um, I think shorts will get trapped. I think we will rally, and I think we measure potential least initial move uh, to seventy two forties on the queues. Where then it gets interesting is the bulls really need to reclaim this ten day again. For me, the five and the ten day, the five day is short term sentiment. The ten day is the birth of the trade. And if you look at the queues, the five and the ten are right next to each other, like literally kissing cousins. So if the bulls can somehow reclaim the 272.40 level, then we start talking about 276, and then we start talking about going back into the upper range here. Uh, if you look at the S&P 500, kind of the same thing. Again, we put in a very, very aggressive hammer on this rising support at 32.30, super bullish. Again, nobody's talking about we're going to all-time highs. You know, this is not, we're trying to put the cart in front of the horse. We're talking about day by day, trade by trade. So again, can we get a dead cat bounce in the next couple of days back to this 33 uh, 50s level? Absolutely. Again, a hammer uh, for all you guys who are brand new trading. This is the most basic, absolute basic thing uh, in Japanese candlesticks. A, a hammer off of rising support is super bullish. So again, fingers crossed tomorrow uh, that we can have a down open, trap some shorts, and off and, off and on. That's what I want to talk about. I want to go over the pivots really quickly, and then I want to tell you what happened to me on Tesla today. So uh, Zoom, right? Zoom, very, very aggressive. Uh, 438, a gap down. 438, sneaky area, rejected pre-market. 442 is Friday's highs, needs to build. Zoom went absolutely nuts. I mean, I mean nuts. I mean, there's nothing really you could say. So here is the whole, here is the whole sneaky pivot right over here, right? Three, uh, 438. It took out Friday's high of 442 and just absolutely exploded. Crazy move on Zoom. Again, we're not going to dwell on the stocks that went. There was just one trade today I really want to talk about, and I'll get that in a second. Peloton, sneaky area, 88, 75, 89. Also needs to confirm Friday's highs of 90. Again, use 90 as your guide just in case it gets rejected there. Again, here's Peloton. Uh, absolutely one nuts, right? So here's Peloton, took out this whole sneaky area right here, 88, 75, 89. Took out Friday's highs, went to almost 97. Huge move on Peloton. Okay, uh, these two stocks never even came to, to, con to confirm. Uh, not even close. Zoom going nuts, 92 on deck. Again, these things were going absolutely nuts. Uh, NVIDIA actually helped me out twice today. I caught NVIDIA twice today. First from that 48 to the 490s, and then I caught it from the 490s and for the 492s. Um, the video was great. Really, really big move in the video. Again, here's a perfect example. Uh, again, they were coming for the 500 calls, 510 calls with a lot of size. And again, here is NVIDIA, right? Here is NVIDIA. So here is the whole area right here. This whole area right here, 488, went to 90, reclaimed 90, and went all the way up to the 503 area. Again, big, big move. Again, I don't want to dwell on that. Uh, Amazon, uh, INO never got there. I still like this 1850 level. Guys, set an alert on this thing. Uh, 1850 has got rejected twice. If this thing starts building over the 1850, this thing could wake up. Amazon, we saw some ridiculous call buying today. When the stock was like 2,900, we saw like 3,800 calls. We even saw the January, February, the March, 5,300 calls going in size. And we talked about here, 29.55 supply. If it can reclaim, it can wake up. Here was Amazon. Let me show you Amazon for, right? So here's the whole uh, 55 level here. And just, just stock really started going, uh, really, really started going very, very strong. I still obviously like it for tomorrow. Uh, Apple 108, here, Apple 108 needs to build. Here's Apple, right? Here's the 108. I'm sorry, again, it's just Apple and Net and Tesla for some reason just has not updated on e-signal. So this whole channel here, 107.80 was the high here, 107.80 was the high here. So it took out the 108, traded all the way up back to 110.70, big, big move on Apple. So again, you can see beta, very, very strong. Uh, FSOY, uh, $95 weekly repeat call buyers are coming in, uh, 92 it needs to reclaim, not a big move, but again, I still like it for tomorrow. Uh, so here was the 92 that it reclaimed. Right here's the 92 that it reclaimed right over here, and you know, stock with the 93. I still like it tomorrow. Uh, I think again, with those guys were coming in very, very aggressively for those 95s. Uh, this is the only short that we had that didn't well, didn't work. Um, 28 
last week lows, if it builds below, it can flush. It traded down to like 2760s and it rallied back again. And here's kind of and here's kind of my point here. This was you know three hours ago. So this is around two o'clock. I started seeing really good premium setups setting up for tomorrow. And look, and I said, looks like a possible premium day is setting up for tomorrow. Uh, good beta channels, a lot of out of the money call buying coming in. Very good, very good stuff here. So uh, again, NOX just didn't uh, work out. So you kind of get the point. I think tomorrow, um, I think tomorrow we're, we're definitely in a situation that I think we could take advantage of some really good channels. Okay, that's for sure. Um, I think if the market gods can help us out a little bit, just give us a nice red open, wash out, reclaim red to green, and off and running. So let me tell you what happened to me, Tesla. Uh, I was really calm about it. Very, very calm. Because I, I do understand if you have a bad trade, right? It's part of the game. There's nothing you could do. Short memory, you know, the whole, you know, the whole kid and caboodle. Short memory, get the hell out of Dodge, uh, come back strong tomorrow, right? Here's the problem. So we were watching Tesla, and I just want to kind of run you through this, kind of run run you through this trade, okay? So the majority of volume that was doing, again, there was a lot of buyers coming in for battery day and for all you guys who are, um, you know, big Tesla followers, uh, just see what, see what Elon Musk just tweeted out uh, about 15 minutes ago. Okay. And this is why I'm, I'm a little agitated. Wasn't agitated up to this recording. I got a little agitated now. So if you notice here, forget about this big candle down, right? If you notice here, you see these three candles here. This is the first three hours of trading, okay? So the average volume, the average price per share for this, for this channel, okay, for this mini channel was from 441, right? That's the low of this rising support, all the way up to 455. So, right, so you got 441 to the downside, you have 455. And usually what happens is when the stock is very, very strong and there's incredibly dis incredible big distribution going on, okay, if the stock dips to its rising 60 minute support, I, again, we've been doing this trade for years, okay? If a stock dips into rising 60 minute support, what usually happens is eager shorts will get trapped, okay? We'll get trapped very, very aggressively and the stock tends to go back to the highs of the day. So I got long, right? I got long right here, right? Right over here, I get long and the stock goes up maybe a dollar, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing crazy. Maybe a dollar. And next thing I see some ridiculous volume coming in. Okay. When I'm telling you ridiculous volume coming in, it was like the last day to sell Tesla stock. Okay. So I can't even blink. Okay. I, I can't even blink. So I lose about five points on it. Okay. Like this, I'm talking about, you can't even blink before this happens. So I start to say to myself, okay, maybe, you know, maybe some, you know, maybe shorts, excuse me, maybe um, sh um, stops get tr got triggered, a fat finger, whatever the case may be. You know what? Let me see if I can remount it again, okay? Because things happen like this all the time. Let me see if I can re remount it again off the next support, right? The next support was this rising wedge here. You see this rising wedge right here. So then I get long at 437. Again, if I told you that the first wave of selling was aggressive, the second wave of selling on Tesla was like, it's like the, the it's like Moses parted the Red Sea, right? It, it was the most aggressive thing I've seen. Yada, yada, yada. The stock goes through, okay, just to give you an idea. The stock goes through the five day, the linear regression line, the lower Bollinger band, and winds up all the way to the 10 day moving average. So I want, and basically yada, 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 it puts in about a $45 candle, okay? I wound up losing net, net about 13 bucks in the trade. It sucks, okay, don't get me wrong. And the problem was I couldn't figure out why, okay? I just couldn't figure out why. And I chalked it up to, you know what? It's just part of the business. Some days, you know, some days you, I, like certain trades, like I know why I lose money, whether I cheated a little bit uh, or I didn't use a second entry or I didn't wait for the second, for the second confirmation candle. So I always know there was always, you know, I always know why I lose pretty much a, a lot of times I lose money in the trade. I didn't have an answer and I was sitting there and I was frustrated and frustrated and frustrated. And then I started thinking throughout the day, I go, maybe there was a fund that needed to be liquidated. Um, you know, God knows I had all these, you know, all these things spinning through my head and I just couldn't figure out 
why there was so much volume. And again, when you look at your, your charts and you look at the five minute, uh, here's like a five minute chart. Here's, let me show you the five minute. So here's a five minute chart of, of the disaster. They were literally selling 10 million shares, literally 10 million shares from 1030, okay? From 1030 to about, I don't know, 1030 to about, I'm sorry, I know it looked crazy. Here it is. You see these three candles, right? They were selling from 1030, I know it wasn't crazy, from 1030 all the way to 1040. So this was 10 minutes, guys. This was 10 minutes. Somebody dumped 10 million shares of Tesla in 10 minutes, taking it through 60 minute support, linear regression line, uh, lower Bollinger Band, the five day moving average, all the way through the 10, okay? Somebody wanted out. There was absolute panic. And the most amazing part was I said to myself, you know what? I usually figure, can figure things out. I didn't figure anything out. There was no lesson that I learned here. It's just, you know, one of those things they're going to turn around and say, remember, hey, remember when Tesla dumped? It's a, it was a crappy trade. It was terrible. But you know what? Life goes on. And as I start to record, right, as I start to record, um, you start seeing Elon Musk tweeting. And now again, I'm not going to go through his Twitter feed. If you guys want to go through his Twitter feed, you'll see what he was tweeting about. He was tweeting about the battery event that's going to be for tomorrow. Okay. And the first couple of headlines, again, you could tell they weren't great. They weren't exciting. There wasn't anything about them that made somebody come out and say, let's go buy the stock. And the obviously yada, 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 they take down Tesla from roughly 454 after hours all the way down to 427. Again, $27 move in a couple of tweets. So the moral of the story is, guys, and it's something, there's two things that I, I really want to emphasize here. Number one, you know, that, you know that theory, somebody always knows something, right? Like somebody always knows something, right? Somebody obviously did. And number two, ish is gonna happen, okay? The faster you can, you can accept that and just understand that it's part of the course of doing business, you know, again, it's over. You can't get back your money. The more you sit there and think about it, it's going to unfortunately spill over to the next trading day. The difference between a trader who's been trading for 20 years and a trader who's been trading for two years, I could really remove that into the next trading session. Unfortunately, if you're a new trader and you're dwelling on this and you're thinking about this over and over and over, it's not fair. Yeah, no kidding. It's not fair. But you know what it is? It's the cost of doing business. Is it going to happen again? Absolutely. Somebody will always know something uh, more than anything others. And this is why we always say it, it's all great about technical analysis. It's all great about uh, macro fundamental. But if somebody wants out, if there's a, a reload seller, reload buyer, depending which side of the market you're trading on, they are going to win. Obviously, somebody knew something. You can see it in the price action after hours. Again, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? But again, price action is speaking incredibly loud. Moral of the story is I'm going to go get some dinner. I'm going to relax. At least I was, at least I understand why it didn't work. And I think I would have been more, much more frustrated uh, trying to figure out why levels that I've been trading for years and years and years didn't hold. Now, at least we know why. It is what it is. Life goes on. Life's not fair. Sometimes trading is not fair. God bless. All right, guys. Have a great night, everybody. Tomorrow's a new day. Short memory. We'll get them again. Take care, guys.